On today's show, we will talk about legalism, what it is and is it an issue that Christians deal with today, and then later on in the show, we will talk with Lisa Han and Family Services Incorporated that's located right here in Altoona. So I've had this word running through my head a lot lately, and that word is isolation. Isolation is when we decide to disconnect and detach ourselves from others. It's separating ourselves from what used to be common activities in our life. So why do people isolate? Well, most often it is because of anxiety, depression, maybe they feel misunderstood, maybe they feel worthless, or maybe it was some kind of big change in their life like the loss of a loved one or your spouse up and just leaves. I'm sure there are other reasons, but I believe these are the big ones. And guess what? Satan would love nothing better than to isolate you. See, he whispers his lies to you and spreads deceit in your thoughts and mind. It's in this quiet place of disappointment and despair that Satan will use his most condemning weapons against us. You see, he slips in very quietly. Starting as a whisper and it builds a tornado of fear and anxiety that is difficult to overcome at times. This is the place he wants you and he will do anything and everything he can to keep you right there. I remember when I couldn't have a second child and I was pretty depressed and sad, so much so that I dropped out of many normal activities that I used to enjoy. I couldn't wait to get out of church and just hoped that no one would talk to me. I didn't want anything to do with anyone really, so I put myself there, but Satan loved keeping me there. And here's the thing. In this place of isolation, depression and anxiety rise. Health issues become heightened, sleep becomes worse, and so many other things, none which are good. I know this is the place many of us go to when things get hard. Too much for us to handle maybe, but we need to recognize and acknowledge that this is the worst thing we can do, and we need to fight as hard as possible not to isolate. Some signs to be aware of that you might be headed this direction are when you start canceling the plans, avoiding social interaction, or distancing yourself from things that you once enjoyed, maybe not leaving the house for days. If we can maybe catch ourselves headed down this dark road, maybe, just maybe, we can keep ourselves from being in that exact place that Satan wants us. When we start seeing ourselves go down this road, I believe we must, we must reach out and find the strength to call on those who can pray for us and encourage us through this. Sometimes it's the hardest thing to get up and take this action, but fight, my friend. Get up, move, even if it's just one step. Don't isolate from those Christian friends and family that can build into you, that can stand in the gap for you, that love on you and encourage you. Moments of isolation aren't necessarily bad, but days and months, they will get you nowhere real fast. Look, I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, but it is necessary to break free from this as fast as you can. And I promise you that it's worth it. And it will bring you freedom, and it will bring healing and hope as you center yourself around those who love you and can help you, even if it's just a listening ear. And I'll end with this verse, Hebrews 10, 25. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You've got this, my friends. So move forward in what God has for you. And remember that we are stronger together than alone. So we are just three ladies with big opinions, always backed by a biblical standpoint. Let's talk about it. When it's time for a new roof, Champion Roofing is your best choice. We're a certified award-winning roofing contractor, meaning your roof is done right the first time. Call today. Champion Roofing, we're the solution. This segment is brought to you by Harry's Construction, whose motto is, if you can dream it, we can create it. They 
are the kitchen and bath design experts, so call Harry's Construction for all your remodeling needs. So today on Let's Talk About It, we are going to get into legalism. Ladies, legalism. It's a big part of the church. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's something that, oh, my earring just fell out. It's something <laughs> that we talk, uh, that people do have. Yeah. Some problems issues with, with yeah. and so we're going to discuss I it. I think every believer, I don't care who you are, has had an episode of mm -hmm. being legalistic. And it's not new. Exactly. It's talked about in the New Testament, exactly. you yeah. know, in Scripture. Um, I did think this was interesting. Romans 14, 1, but we are called to be gracious. Mm. Accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. I feel wow. like we can avoid... Political parties, alcohol, cigarettes, dancing, movies, and still not be any further ahead spiritually. Oh, absolutely. Because absolutely. really what I think when I think of legalism, it's so about the rules mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. about religious mindset and mm -hmm. not about relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. about your love for God. And, uh, so, and yeah. unfortunately, there are a lot of very popular pastors that preach rules. Mm -hmm. I had somebody come in my office just last week and said, do you know that scripture says women shouldn't do this and women shouldn't do this and women shouldn't do this? And I said, oh, is mm. that right? <laughs> and the person mm. said, yes, pastor so-and-so said that. And I said, mm. hmm. And honestly, it wasn't worth the argument. Yeah. I wasn't gonna change their mind, right. you know? But that's total legalism. And they got it from a very popular pastor. Hmm. I think, too, a lot of things we choose to be legalistic about are the things that we don't do. Yeah. Oh. You're not oh. badgering somebody over the little thing, idiosyncrasies yeah. that you yeah. do. But, right. Because yeah. I can remember um, down at our old church, we used to have some fellas come and they would stand outside, right outside the door and smoke. Mm -hmm. And I'd drive up and get all wadded up over like, you know. <laughs> well, that was easy for me because mm -hmm. I have never picked up a cigarette mm -hmm. in my entire life. I right. have no clue what that's all about. Mm -hmm. So I should not judge anybody on something. I have no idea the mm -hmm. pull that that has on a person. Right. But, and that's just a small example yeah. of how we can. No, you're right. Way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. For me, one thing I've really tried hard with is that just because God may speak it to me, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that he's you speaking right. it to you too. So there's been times in my life when he said, Kelly, I need you to stop watching this television show because I know what it's doing to your mind. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that I have to go to Troy and say, well, you have to stop watching mm -hmm. it too. Mm -hmm. He spoke it to me. Mm -hmm. And so now I have to be obedient to what he spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And it's not for me to throw on to anybody else. And we're all at different places yeah. spiritually. Mm -hmm. We are all at different places. And I have never seen somebody beat into loving Jesus. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. They're yeah. not. Yeah. They're not. Because there's... With legalism, there's no grace. No, that's it's right. It's very harsh. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's judgmental. Yes. That's yes. what legalism Absolutely is. Absolutely it is. I have an extreme case of it. When I w lived in North Carolina, we went to... We put our kids in um, a Christian school. And so why would I not go to church there when mm -hmm. we first moved there? I thought, well, this is easy. And I went to a women's Bible study during the week because I hadn't started working yet. And the first thing I noticed was all the ladies had dresses on. And I, in typical Teresa yeah. fashion, <laughs> I'm like, oh, dear. And so I felt bad. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, I really apologize. I didn't realize that that was the culture. And I will be aware of that the next time. And so the following Sunday, I kid you not, this happened like a Tuesday morning. That Sunday night, I went to church and I wore a dress because I knew the culture. And wouldn't you know, it was about proper dress attire. Oh. And it was harsh. Oh. It was very judgmental. And I was like, oh. Uh -oh. And so I went up, and I loved this preacher. He was a little older, but he, he preached a good message. I, I thought he was great. Mm -hmm. And I went up to him, and I said, I just hope that you didn't think you had to preach that because I came to women's Bible study with jeans on. And he says, well, I'm just going to say this. 
Oh. If you look like you're going to the rodeo, then you just might be a cowboy. Oh. And I went, <laughs> okay. That is not even why I stopped going to church there. Yeah. You know why? Because I can take it. But I thought to myself, what family member mm-hmm. could I not bring in this church yeah. right, to receive right. the word because they might not dress to his standards? Yeah. No love, no grace. No, and that's All why. things in love, scripture yes. says. Yes. Yes. That is not in love. And I'll tell you one thing that, that I have had a struggle with in the past recent little bit is younger people wearing hats to church and not taking them off when we pray. Mm-hmm. That is a, a generational thing. And I think, oh, don't you have any respect? You should be taking your hat off. If they haven't been taught to take their hat off, leave them alone. They're in church, Arlene. Just to, don't look at them. You know, <laughs> don't look at them. Yeah. Because nobody is ever beat to death to love Jesus. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have, I have a friend that just started attending Transformation Church. And we went out to talk the one day. And she said, you know, there were multiple churches that I was pretty much kicked out of because of how I looked. She has tattoos on her face. Oh, tattoos yes. On, like, they're yes. everywhere. Yes. And they told her she was not welcome. That's horrible. And I'm like, why? Why? Why would anybody ever do that? I just, oh. I, I don't understand that concept. You need to look at your heart. At all. I mean, here's the thing. I went to see Jesus Revolution, and it was like, it, I laughed, but it's really not funny. There's a scene. Did you see the movie? Yeah. The scene where um, this pompous guy is standing there talking to Chuck Smith, and he says that all the hippies are getting the carpet dirty. Oh, yes. And, yes. and oh. he says, so you're worried about saving the carpet. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. bam, yeah. that's what we yeah. do. Right. We make so many things so much more important. We do. And, and instead of letting God be the yeah, one. That's exactly let right. Let God be the one to speak to their hearts. If there are things that need fixed, if there are things that are sinful or yeah. not right, let God do yeah. that. Right. That's you right. Know, we love on them. Mm-hmm. We build into them. We encourage. Let God do the fixing. And hopefully somebody's going to do the same thing to us. Yeah. Yes. They will love us instead mm-hmm. of putting us down or criticizing us. Yeah. I can't. It's hard. And I think another big thing that we do sometimes, too, that we have to be careful with when it comes to legalism is we will take scripture, but we will just take a portion of it Mm -hmm. or just make it fit what we want. Yes. Our narrative. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I know one for me and I don't know where you guys stand on this, but with the tattoos, we actually take some of the scripture and use it wrongly with that yes. at times yes and you know so then people stand on that and it's yep. like well that's actually not what it means right and so we just do you know somebody to... used somebody used that scripture against one of our local pastors at saturate El Tuna. really yeah. and i'm like Jeez. whoa wait a minute why are you here yeah if you're if if you are here to just say oh you're wrong because you do X, Y, Z, regardless of what it is. Why are you there? What is your purpose for being there? Are you going to fix everybody? Do you think that's your job? No, I'm sorry. You make a terrible Holy Spirit. This is God's job. <laughs> I love that you make and a terrible Holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I am not a good I'm Holy Spirit. I am not a good Holy that. Spirit. Trust me. <laughs> Sometimes I think I am. <laughs> But I am a terrible Holy Spirit. Yeah. We are not anybody's Holy Spirit. Yeah, you're right. I just think in your efforts to point the finger at everybody else around you, maybe you need to go sit down somewhere and and clean up. And look at yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Say, God, show me. I feel like that is would crush my heart if I knew that my judgmental, stinky attitude caused somebody to fall further away. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. That would hurt me deeply. Oh. And, right. um, and I'm not saying that I haven't done that. If right. I did, I, I, don't, I didn't know I did or I caught myself like the smoking thing. I have no clue yeah. to judge anybody yeah. on that. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, too. A lot of the things that we are so judgmental on, I mean, smoking, obviously, it's something that they do probably eventually need to work on. But it's mm-hmm. not a salvation issue. Right. Right. But sometimes it's like, okay, what does it hurt them wearing a hat? What does it hurt someone That's having right. a yes. tattoo? 
You what know, does it hurt her? wearing pants? Right. right. Shorts. Right. T-shirt. What's right. it hurt? Like, who cares? Yeah. Why are we setting all these boundaries and rules yeah. just to make ourselves feel yeah. better, probably? Yeah. What well, are we, Pharisees? Yes. Well, you know what? Mm. They yeah. lost my jeans, and they lost me. And yeah. as far as yeah. I'm concerned, they lost a good one because I would yeah. have done yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. I, know, yeah. I know my... Absolutely. Feeling. And we do not want to be a church that loses people That's over right. those kind of things. Exactly. And so if you've been hurt by the church, we are so sorry. And we hope that you know that God loves you. If you have tattoos, if you're wearing a hat, if you're wearing jeans, God With loves you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be okay. So find a church that will accept you for who you are. But God accepts you exactly where you are. We want to invite you to the Summer Worship Series, Saturate Altoona. This has become the most anticipated multi-church summer event of our community. With more than 25 churches represented. We'll have free food and activities through our blessing booth beginning at 5.30. Then the service kicks off at 6.30. Throughout the evening, we'll have worship from one of our community bands, a prayer focus time, and then a powerful message from one of our city pastors. Plan to join us for Saturated Altoona every Sunday night in June at 6.30 at Heritage Plaza in downtown Altoona. You won't, 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 you you won't, won't want to miss it. So today we have Lisa Han with us with Family Services Incorporated. And I'm so excited to have her here, ladies, because they do a lot of things. But before we get into all that you guys do, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I've been with Family Services for 11 years, um, not born and raised in Blair County, but it became my home when I had my two children here and married my husband in, in order to do that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, it was my intent. This is only going to be a temporary base, but uh, here I am almost mm. 30 years later. Mm. Wow. That's awesome. I love to hear that. So Family Services. I know when I looked into you guys, it incorporates a lot of different things, but today I well, actually, before we even get into what I specifically would like to hit on, tell us what are some of the things that it, it does involve. Sure, real quickly. Um, we're an umbrella organization. We provide group homes and services to folks uh, with intellectual disabilities. We have a teen center and shelter that serves teens 12 up to age 18. We have a victim services program that serves victims of domestic violence and other violent crimes. And we have a children's advocacy center that serves kids who um, we th feel may have been sexually assaulted. Oh, wow. And okay. we have a civil legal representation office. So our services are across every age wow. and every every condition. That is a lot. Yeah, yeah. they're hitting Can a you lot not of add areas. one yeah. more thing? <laughs> <of> bad areas. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we built a new family shelter. Okay. You know? <laughs> Things are a little slow. Yeah, and they're needed. Absolutely, yeah. all those areas mm -hmm. are needed. Mm -hmm. and, but today we're gonna focus a little bit on the homeless side of things. And we know you just opened up a new facility for that, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that process. Sure. Um, we had a homeless shelter for probably 35 years that served 16 people. That was not adequate because right now there's probably 285 people on what's called the by name list um, who are waiting for housing in Blair County. We have hmm. 200 and some people that are, wow. That's just the people who have signed up and are wow. registered in a coordinated entry system. They're just the people who are looking. We have many more than that who aren't currently looking or who, who are couch surfing or... Wow, I would have I never guessed no that idea. number was so Yeah, high. I had no idea. Yeah, a lot of people were surprised by that number. So we looked at that number and we said we have to do better because we were turning away a thousand people a year from oh the 16-bed shelter. So um, we spent five years on this project and it... We looked at every empty building in Blair County mm. and there were some, um, you know, some real bad properties. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They were probably really inexpensive. Oh, they were. Um, and if you didn't mind pigeons and ice, oh. and, you know. Um, but we had some requirements. We wanted it to be close to other services. It had to be on a bus route. It had to be a building that could be um, renovated to my specifications because I knew what we wanted. Um, so we ended up, um, after looking at several buildings, we ended up with the old Drenning Warehouse over at 2300 North Branch Avenue. And if you know where that is, right now it's right behind Blair County um, Community Action where our clients get services. 
It's right down the street from Sister Paula's Soup Kitchen. It's right up the street from the food pantry, and there's a bus stop on the corner. Hmm. So it met all the, it hit all the bells and whistles there for me. Check, check, check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we decided that we could probably accommodate 35 beds. Hmm. That was our goal. Um, managing those numbers with the number of staff that we could provide. So we got to work raising money, and I will tell you that that effort was a patchwork quilt of funding. Um, what started out as a $2.3 million project ended up being a $4.9 million project <sighs> thanks to COVID and all the shipping oh, happens every time. <laughs> yes. And oh at, we, we actually... Almost double your yes. price. And, oh, my goodness. And we actually halted um, the process for a short period of time because we couldn't get the materials mm -hmm. that we needed. So um, our 35-bed shelter houses men, women, and children. Um, you do have to be... Um, sober when you come in, mm. clean. Um, you have to be willing to follow the rules and the rules are pretty basic. You know, you have to be respectful of other people, maintain your residence there, and they can stay for 30 days. 30 days. And we stick to that and it sounds harsh, but if you are motivated to move on to the next level, whatever that is, you're gonna hit the ground running when you walk in the door. There's gonna be people there who are helping you look for housing, helping you look for work. Um, we post everything that we can so people know what's out there. I actually and really appreciate that you have a time limit because yes. mm -hmm. you're, you're <coughs> giving them a, you know, hey, you have to set goals and you've got to do mm -hmm. something. Holding like them it. accountable. Yeah, we all need to be held accountable. Yeah, and, and we say we want to give people a hand up, not a hand out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what we found at the other shelter, if we went beyond 30 days, people got very complacent mm -hmm. about looking. And they were there for maybe 90 days. Mm -hmm. And we understand that um, at the end of 30 days, we've had situations where you may have a landlord who says, yes, you can move in, but it's not gonna be available for a week or two. So if you have done everything you needed to do while you were there, if you've turned in your sheet proving that you've been looking for employment, proving you've been looking for housing, then at the end of your 30 days, we can extend that an additional two weeks if you need that. Hmm. Um, so we set the place up so that there are double rooms, single rooms. We have four single rooms. Um, we designed those specifically for vets or oh, folks with nice. mental health mm. yeah. issues. Um, we know that vets won't even come in sometimes if they have to share a room with someone because mm. of PTSD. Yeah. Mm. So we have those. And then our other regular rooms have bunk beds in them. So we try to accommodate, you know, you get who you came in with. But if there's a situation where we're full and we have to ask a gentleman to share with someone or another lady to share with someone, we'll do that. We have a men's and women's hall. We designed it so that um, four of the rooms have doors between them like a hotel room suite. Oh, so okay. that if we have a family with older kids, the mom and dad can be in one room, the kids can be wow. right next door. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then you really did think all of this through. I just thought of every yeah. <laughs> problem we had at the old sure. shelter and how would we fix that. And one sure. of our problems were we had, um, we might have room for a woman, but we wouldn't have room for a man in mm -hmm. the family and we were sending men away or sending their older children away. Um, we did design two family rooms that will accommodate six people. They have twin over fulls plus a futon. Mm. And they have their own bathroom in the family room. So if you come in with small children, you know, mm. little toddler people, and we've already had brand new babies and toddlers there, oh. um, that you can stay in the family room and the only thing you have to share is the common kitchen area mm. because you have a TV in there. I didn't want small children having to use the, the group showers. Mm. And, and well, that was my thing. I was gonna ask you, what do you have in place that provides safety measures? Yeah. Because it is co-ed, right. not that that means anything, but just. We have a men's um, group shower at one end, women's group shower at the other. We have a single shower facility in case someone comes in with a communicable disease or wow. perhaps they um, don't identify as the, the sex that they were assigned at mm -hmm. birth and they were more comfortable in a single bathroom. Um, and then the staff got their own bathroom. They were so excited because <laughs> at the other shelter, sharing a bathroom with 16 people, you know, you can mm -hmm. imagine it was, it was difficult. Um, we have a living room area, we have a children's playroom area, mm. we have a common um, dining area and that can also be used for educational purposes. There are two kitchens. Um, the facility is fully handicapped accessible, mm. but we have one kitchen designated as the handicapped kitchen. Um, all the knobs are on the front, everything's lower. A wow. uh, wow. walk-in cooler <laughs> freezer. Um, I know, it is amazing. Laundry facilities for everyone there. And uh, then a conference room, again, I, my, I only have one paid staff per shift, and it was always difficult to get people together for staff meetings, but now I have a, a conference room there, and I can do online mm. trainings, and I can do mm. Zoom meetings if I have to. 
So we really tried to think of everything we could to make this the best that we mm, could. Yeah. When you walk in the door, um, it's very secure. You get a car, uh, everyone gets a card like a hotel. You scan yourself in. The office sits right in the middle of everything with glass windows all around and lots of windows into the living room and the children's room so you can see what's going mm -hmm. on. And there are 16 cameras, again, for safety. That was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, I mean. That makes me feel like really good. <laughs> yeah. And even though we're open and running, we've recognized that, you know, we're tweaking it as we go along. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of our locking devices didn't come in, so we're waiting for some of those. We recognized that we needed more of a ring doorbell set up at the front door so we could see who was in the lobby. Mm -hmm. um, we're moving up, ca putting a camera out front on the porch because we realized there, you know, if there's an altercation out there, staff doesn't know what's going mm -hmm. on. So you learn. So yeah. how, uh, how frequently are you full? We have not hit 35 yet. And how um, long have you been in this building? We, since the end of February, beginning of March. Okay. And so we, brand new. Yeah, brand okay. new. Everything's brand new. And um, so I think we're at uh, the highest we've been at so far was 18. Okay. Because as we were bringing new people in, some people were leaving. They didn't mm -hmm. last the whole 30 days. They mm -hmm. didn't have to. Mm -hmm. um, but. Now we've got new people coming in. So we're gonna hit 35. Wow, I mean, I am just so impressed by this. I really am. Absolutely. And I think you guys are doing a great thing yes. for our city. And I just love the heart behind it. And I just, you know, if you're watching this and you know someone that's in need, reach out. This is a great program and they can help you a lot better than we can. And I just thank you so much for joining us today Thanks and sharing what's going on in our well, city. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Made by Vogel is a father and son business that produces high quality handmade wooden products such as cutting boards, bowls, bottle stoppers and more. Products for sale can be found on their Etsy site or in downtown Altoona at the Clay Cup. You can't go wrong buying from Made by Vogel. Last few months I've ended the show with sharing a small business with you instead of a tip and I would like to do that again today. The business I would like to give a shout out to is Woody's on the Boulevard. This restaurant has had a few different owners throughout the years but now it is owned by Britt and Bill McCauley and they have done an amazing job keeping that food delicious. They've updated the menu adding many wonderful options to it. There are so many good choices. Subs, salad, wings, loaded fries, burgers, and more. And they use a premium deli meat and are still very affordable. You can dine in or you can take out. My youngest can be a pretty picky eater, but he absolutely loves when we eat there. And I love their homemade dressing. And I've heard that their loaded fries are something everyone should try. So that's on my list for the next time. Because this is a small restaurant, I think sometimes it can be forgotten about, especially since in this area we have so many restaurants to choose from. But I'm going to ask you to try it out. And if you haven't, go and find it. And if you have, plan on going back. You won't regret it. And better yet, you'll be helping a small business keep their doors open. They are open for business Tuesday through Saturday and can be found at 3305 Pleasant Valley Boulevard. So let us know if you give it a try. And until next time, let's talk about it.